12 years in the league, a Super Bowl champ with the Broncos. He now lives in Denver, a two-time Pro Bowler. And he was often a guy that you could bring into a franchise very, very quickly in the middle of a season if you had to. And he would learn the playbook quickly, get right in, put him in your offense. And we're seeing that now with the trading deadline where we're asking Chase, Chase Claypool to come on, come to Chicago, figure things out. Christian McCaffrey, figure out the playbook. Not everybody can do that. Emmanuel Sanders could. He now works for the NFL Network. So let's take Chase Claypool. So he has a very young quarterback, obviously, in Justin Fields. He's a kid. It's not a veteran quarterback. And, and, and Chase is fairly young. So now he's got to learn a new offense, new terminology with a young, growing quarterback. How long before I can expect, as a fan, Chase Claypool to get 10 targets? Uh, I mean, it depends on how, how fast he pick up the playbook. But, you know, when I look at that Chicago Bears offense, I, I see Justin Fields, how fast this guy is. If I'm an offensive coordinator, I'm looking at my chops and how dynamic I can I can make this playbook. But obviously, you know, when you go back and watch the games, they're missing that big play receiver. You know, I look at Philadelphia and I look at, you know, the receivers that they have and, uh, you know, and, and A.J. Brown, the way that A.J. Brown's catching the ball, big play receiver, right, that you can just – you can have trust in and throw the ball up and he's making a play. They had three touchdowns last week. That's what Chicago is missing. So, hopefully, uh, Claypool could be that. You know, I don't know if he could be that yet, but I, all I know is in watching the Ch Chicago Bears games, Justin Fields needs a receiver, if not another one as well. Yeah. And, um, so they have the quarterback. They just, just got to keep adding pieces around. Him. But it's going to be up to Chase and how fast he wants to, how fast he wants to, you know, learn a playbook and get acclimated with everything. How surprised are you with Jalen Hurts, second round pick, left Bama, got beat out by Tua. I watch him and it reminds me a little of Josh Allen. Doubters in year one. We kind of like him in year two. Star in year three. I never thought he'd be a 70% completion rate guy, and he's, he's getting into the 67 68%. He's very accurate. I've got to be honest. I, I did not forecast this. I did not see this stardom. Did you? I don't think – well, when I was in New Orleans, he beat us as a rookie. Wow. And I, I thought I was a fugazi. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then but then you want to know what like every quarterback and every every player needs a GM and needs a head coach and needs an offensive coordinator and what the Philadelphia Eagles are doing and what they're building out there that's that's all in part of the GM and a head coach and everybody putting it all together they're they're putting pieces together after pieces together to try to win a Super Bowl and I commend them on them I commend them on that. They're doing a tremendous job. And you look at the offense that Jalen Hurts is in. Like, that offense is suitable to him. Like, he's able to use his legs. He's able to use his, his ability to throw on the run. They got a big play receiver in, in A.J. Brown. They got Speed and Smith. They got a defense now. He has so many pieces around him now. It's, it's like he's at Alabama again, right? He got, a, he got a great offensive line, a great defensive line. He has pieces around him. But one thing that I do love about Jalen Hurts is when I watch him play and his composure and the way that he plays and yeah. the grace that he plays the game with, like I have an appreciation for that as well. I don't want to take anything away from him because I enjoy watching the way that he plays the game, the leadership that, he, that he's showing in year three and the, and the way that, you know, that, that, that he's just been playing. But, man, kudos to the, the Philadelphia or, the Eagles organization in general, man, that – that the GM is doing a great job. The head coach is doing a great job. And everybody out there, they're putting the pieces together to try to win a Super Bowl. Listen, a two is a little smaller than you'd like. He doesn't drive the ball down the field. Um, uh, he's been banged up a little bit. I've been a little bit of a doubter. But I did pick him to be a wild card team. And I love their coach. Like the Eagles, they went and got a left tackle. They went and got Tyreek Hill. Um, they may have to go up north to Buffalo when it's cold and windy or Kansas City, but do you buy the Dolphins as a serious Super Bowl contender? Yes, I do. I do. Uh, just because I see that the way that they're doing. Uh, Jalen Waddle and, 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 and Tyreek Hill, they're on pace right now. Me and Demarius was one of the only three receivers to go over 3,000 yards, and they're on pace to do that. They're doing something special out there. And, again, a quarterback is only as good as the pieces that you put around him. And, you know, when, when I saw that Tyreek Hill went out there, I remember 
being on the sideline multiple times, multiple times with the Broncos, even when, when I was with the Niners in the Super Bowl and Tyreek Hill making big play after big play. He's a Hall of Fame caliber player. He's a Hall of He has Hall of Fame caliber speed. You put him with Jalen Waddle. Now you got Tua, who went to Alabama and had a, had, had a great career at Alabama. Like I said, quarterbacks are only as good as the weapons that you have around, and those guys are dangerous. Yeah. Like, I remember sitting in locker rooms and hearing – we're playing against Tyreek Hill and hearing defensive backs talking about, hey, hey, safety, make sure you have my help on this play right here because I'm on Tyreek Hill. So the entire defense is eyeing on him, which allows everybody else to get off. And then you have Jalen Waddle, you have Moster, who I play with Moster with the 49ers. And you want to talk about a guy that's so fast that if he gets around a corner, it's a, it's a home run. Yeah. And so they have all the pieces. They have they have great DBs. Anything can happen, right? Obviously, right now, Buffalo is still my favorite, but the Dolphins beat Buffalo, you know, when Buffalo went to Miami. So, I mean, the, the, in the AFC, um, it's going to be real interesting once the playoffs come around to see who really who really uh, leads the AFC in the Super Bowl. Emmanuel Sanders for our radio audience. Always, always strong opinions. We've had him on the show multiple times, and now he's at the NFL Network. Good for them. By the way, one more question. Uh, you played for the Niners. I defend Jimmy Garoppolo constantly. My audience doesn't like him. You played with him. And I've always said, he's accurate. He gets rid of it. He's a guy's guy. He's good in the room. It ain't always pretty. Get, get, are, are you, a, I mean, you could easily say good or bad things. What's your interpretation of Jimmy G? My, my interpretation of Jimmy G was the last game versus the Rams when he was scrambling out and George, George Kittle was running in the back of the end zone. And the DB thought he had a chance, and, and, and Jimmy G just dropped it in a bucket, and George Kittle got up. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, you see Christian McCaffrey flare out, and next thing you know, Jimmy G, he doesn't even look like he opened, and Jimmy G just drops it in a bucket. We talked about a quarterback last year that went to, went to the NFC Championship, went to the NFC Championship, went to Green Bay and beat, beat Aaron Rodgers at, at Lambeau. Uh, I don't really get why everybody's so down on the train as if Jimmy G's supposed to be winning the Super Bowl at MVP caliber every year or just some magical quarterback. I mean, he's winning games. Right. He's winning games. So, you know, obviously everybody looks back at that Super Bowl and they say, oh, man, you know, I walk through the airport or I go anywhere and they say, man, you got overthrown in the Super Bowl. You got overthrown. I'm like, that one play didn't determine the Super Bowl. If you go back and look and you ask Kittle, you ask Debo, you ask Jimmy, you ask Nick, you ask the, the, the secondary, you ask, uh, you ask anybody on that team, could they have made a difference in that Super Bowl and did something different to change the outcome of that game? I'm sure they would say yeah. But everybody just kind of wants to, wants to point the finger at Jimmy G. And I, don't think, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair at all. At, at the end of the day, we lost, and you can't point the finger at one person. All right, NFL game day morning, NFL Network every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Not surprised at all that Emmanuel Sanders has gone from a great NFL career to the broadcasting space. NFL Network, game day morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. You're always welcome on the show. Great seeing you again, man. Hey, good seeing you too, Colin. Hey, I appreciate you having me on, brother. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.